Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf in Dear Ruth. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Several years ago, my good friend Norman Krasner wrote a most refreshing stage play called Dear Ruth. Broadway took it to its heart, and so did picture audiences, when Paramount cast it to perfection with William Holden as the flying lieutenant, Joan Caulfield as the lady in question, and Billy DeWolf as the third party in this boisterous romantic comedy. We're happy to present it now with those original delightful stars. The background of our story is a typical American home, which is another way of saying a home in which Lux Toilet Soap is a very common fixture. And the young ladies in our play are also typical, which is to say that while they behave in a highly unpredictable, bewildering manner, they doubtless share an American preference for Lux Soap, which is a favorite beauty care of girls romantically inclined. As to where those romantic inclinations often lead, here's the first act of Dear Ruth, starring Joan Caulfield in the title role, William Holden as Bill, and Billy DeWolf as Albert, with Alan Reed as Judge Wilkins. It's a Saturday morning, a way, way back in 1944. In the Wilkins home in a pleasant suburb of New York City, the youngest member of the family, aged 16, has descended for breakfast. Come and sit down, Miriam. You're going to be late for your music lesson. Yes, Mother. But how you can be so concerned with my music lesson with the world in upheaval, I fail to comprehend. Now, dear, we've been all through that. And since you can't enlist in the Marines, you might just as well for... Miriam, you're wearing that silly little beret again. Oh, but, Mother, I've told you... Our entire political science class is wearing the beret, the national hat of France, as our protest against the State Department. State Department? The policy of the State Department as regards France is simply awful. Oh. Good morning, Edith. Good, Good morning, morning dear. Miriam. Good morning, Father. Dora, the judge's breakfast, please. Yes, ma'am. Where's Ruth? She hasn't left yet, has she? She'll be right down. She's already had breakfast. Oh. Well, Miriam, now that's what I call a cute hat. Thank you, Father. The State Department won't like it. Here's your eggs, Judge, just the way you like them. Uh, thank you, Dora, but I think not this morning. Oh, Father, I wish you'd eat eggs. For my sake. Your sake? Frankly, I signed you up to give a pint of blood at the blood bank. You'll need your strength. You signed me to give my blood? Well, it won't take mine. I'm allegedly too young or something. Miriam, you had no right to sign your name and commit your father. Oh, I didn't sign my name. I signed father's name. But, but that's forgery. Young lady, but I... I think... simply felt that as a judge, you'd set a proper example for this community. I'm a traffic judge. Let the Supreme Court give blood. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning dear. Good morning. What time did you get in last night, dear? Oh, about 10.30. Wasn't that rather early? She probably had another lover's quarrel with Albert. That's enough, Miriam. I... I'll tell you about it later, Mother. I know, after I leave. Well, I'm leaving right now. Dora, if you sign my petition, may I have it, please? I signed it, Miss Miriam, but mine, mine. What is it this time? American womanhood. Miriam insists the government should draft women for the army. Mm-hmm. That's one petition I'd like to see go through. It would solve everything if this girl were drafted. Oh, you'll see all of you. Now, now tell me about the quarrel, dear, with Albert. Oh, it was so silly, Mother. You know, Albert doesn't want me to smoke. He's kind of a health bug. And this business about cutting out cigarettes is the latest. Well, that's hardly a quarrel. You can get around that. Sure. Smoke corn silk behind the bar. Oh, now, you cannot be angry at Albert if he's solicitous about Ruth's health. Oh, but it's such a strain, Mother. Popping a mint in my mouth every time I think he's going to kiss me. Oh, well. Oh, I better get down to the corner. Albert will be along any second. Be charming, dear, but dignified. Charming, but dignified. How do you manage a thing like that? I'll try, Mother. Bye, darling. Goodbye, dear. More coffee, Harry? Please. They're going to draw my blood today. I'd better have something in my veins. <laughs> Harry, what do you really think of Albert? Well, he's vice president of the bank, isn't he? He could support an old father-in-law very easily. But do you think Ruth likes him? I don't know, Edith. Our Ruthie never says very much. My grandfather was like that, just like a clam. I know. I've seen his picture. <laughs> 
Hickory, do you know why Albert Cummer isn't in the army? He says he has a bad back. Well, that needn't disqualify him as a husband. They have the Lieutenant Seacroft calling, Judge. Seacroft? Yes, and to see Miss Ruth. Well, tell him she's gone to the bank. Uh, I beg your pardon. Huh? Oh. Oh, well, come in, come in. Oh, thank you. You're Ruth's father and mother. <laughs> That's a fairly safe deduction, Lieutenant. <laughs> Well, what I mean is I, I, I'd recognize you anywhere. Uh, Ruth told me so much about both of you and her letters. Her letters? Yes. Oh. Well, it's too bad you didn't call earlier, Lieutenant. Ruth's gone to work. Oh, I, I could have been here in time, but I, I stopped to freshen up. Thirty hours ago, I was in Italy. Oh. In Italy? Well. Oh, sit down, Lieutenant. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, how, um, how is everything in Italy? Oh, uh, Italian. Oh. <laughs> well, uh... uh what time will she be home? Ruthie? Oh, not till about 5.30. Not until then, huh? Well, <laughs> you can't blame me for being impatient. Seeing Ruth after all this time, uh, I suppose she told you all about me. Uh, uh, oh, yes, 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 indeed. Uh, so, uh, so you're a, a pilot, Lieutenant. Oh, no, no, not a pilot, just a bombardier. A bombardier. You must have some stories to tell. Uh, look, you think if I showed up at the bank, they'd give Ruth a day off? You see, I've only got two days. Why don't you try? Uh, she's a teller at accounts receivable. She's in a cage with bars in front of her. Oh, the bars wouldn't stop me, sir. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, how did you happen to be a bombardier? Well, I... Uh, well, you see, I was in the engineers when I got to England. But then there was Ruth and her letters, and she's quite a letter writer. <laughs> Anyway, I was there, and she was here, and a war in between, so, so I applied for bombardier training. You see, after 25 missions, you, you get to come back home. Oh, they must have been some letters. Oh, they were. <laughs> Considering I'm pretty nervous just being in a plane. Well, if you'll excuse me, I just can't wait to see Baby. Baby? That's what I call her, Baby. Oh, I used to call Ruth Baby, too. It's not the same thing, dear. Well, I'll, I'll just wander down to the bank and look in. Maybe if I get my nerve up, I'll, I'll change my mind and surprise her. Yes, you do that. Yeah, well, anyway, I'll be back at 5.30, and, and thanks a lot. Oh. oh, what a nice-looking boy. But you'd think Ruth would confide in her own mother. She writes him letters for months and months, doesn't even mention his existence. Bill. Bill Seacroft. Oh, that's a nice name. Yes. This one hasn't got a bad back, either. <laughs> But who is he? Well, now, don't worry, Harry. We'll find out all about him at 5.30. Better set the table, Dora. It's almost 5.30. Yes, ma'am. The lieutenant will probably stay for dinner, so use the good plates. Oh, and serve the $2 bottle of wine. I'll answer it, Dora. I'll get it, Mother. Hello? Oh, hello, Clara. Oh, fine. Miriam, is that Ruth? It's Clara. What, Clara? Well, of course. In my telegram, I said, draft us or take back our right to vote. We resent being nothing more than producers of children. We... Oh, I'll talk to you later, Clara. A prominent member of the last generation just came home. Thank you. Is uh, Ruth home, Miriam? Father, the whole world's on fire. You concern yourself with the humdrum activities of a young woman who's comfortable, secure, and very well fed. I merely asked, is Ruth home? Not yet. Oh, I've got to sit down. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? Oh, I feel fine. Father, you're pale. You went to the blood bank. Oh, I'm just crazy about you. Then stop signing my name to things. <laughs> Miriam, there were 20 people at the blood bank, all women. I was the only person put to bed with a blanket over him. I certainly hope the fellow who gets my blood doesn't need it too badly. Frankly, I have no confidence in it. Oh, hello, dear. Hello. How do you feel, Harry? Oh, fine, dandy. But you looked so awful stretched out on that cot. Were you there, too? Certainly. Oh, thank you, Mother. My contribution to the war effort today was two pints of blood. Your contribution? Well, it was all my idea, wasn't it? Edith, did Ruth phone? No. And I've been thinking we'd better be prepared for a quick decision. About what? That lieutenant. He's got that overseas look in his eyes. Oh. Well, I'm not in favor of hasty marriages, are you? No, but I hope somebody asks us. I'd at least like to discuss it. Hello, everybody. We're in the living room, Ruth. Oh, what a wonderful day. It is? Why? What happened? Oh, nothing. Only that I'm going to be married. Oh, Ruth, baby. Well, Dad, aren't you going to say anything? We're delighted to get rid of you. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what I thought. I, I just don't know why I cry so easily. Oh, I'll get it. It'll be for me. Well, I'm grateful for one thing. I'm certainly glad we discussed it. Dad, it's for you. Western Union. Oh, Ruth, dear, of course we really didn't expect you to ask our permission, Oh, but... now, Dad. Oh, Mother, I've got to change. He'll be here any minute. We're going out. Yes, dear. Dora, just three for dinner and save the wine. Don't forget the phone, Dad. Oh, oh, oh yes. Hello? What? Read that again, please. Producers of children? Oh, no, no, no. There must be some mistake. I hardly ever send telegrams to the Secretary of War. Father, that's my telegram. But it's my telephone. Hold the phone. I pay the bill. I'll pay you back out of my allowance every penny. Thank you. Father, may I please have the phone? Hello? Yes, charge it to this number. And could you mark it personal, please? Thank you. Young woman, since when have you been corresponding with the Secretary of War? We're not corresponding. Nothing he could say would interest me. Well, I hope he never finds that out. He's a very sensitive man. <laughs> Edith, not that it will make any difference, but I think we'd better go upstairs and have a talk with Ruth. Oh, this family. It's just that we love you, Ruth, dear, and, well, we just wonder if you really know this boy well enough to marry him. Ruth, no one's ever been hurt by waiting. But we've waited so long already, Dad. Well? Well, huh? Very cleverly put, my dear. All right, Ruth, if your mind's made up, go on, go and get married. Oh, Dad, you should have seen him at the bank today. He was so cute. He was smoking a cigarette. Is that cute? It was all for my sake. He said it was his way of apologizing for last night. <laughs> he just about choked. Bruce, by any chance are you talking about Albert? Well, certainly I'm talking about Albert. Well, who did you think he I is. was... He'll be here any second. He wants to surprise her. Look, uh, would it be asking too much to have just a glimmer of what you two are talking about? Bruce, the lieutenant has come home. What lieutenant? Bruce, Bill's home. Bill Seacroft. We thought he was the one you were marrying. Bill who? For heaven's sake, don't you even remember him? Mother, Dora wants to Just go a minute, Miriam. I haven't the faintest idea who or what you're talking about. Lieutenant Seacroft, the one who calls you baby. Baby? But he's overseas. He's... Oh. Miriam. <laughs> you march straight in here. Dora wants to know if she should make biscuits. And I want to know what you've done. I'll handle this, Edith. Miriam, what have you done? Oh, but I didn't know he was coming back. Who was coming back? But how did it start? Very logically, Mother, with our bundles for Britain. Go on, Frankenstein. Well, <laughs> we decided on bundles for our boys. Oh, you remember, Ruth? I was president. You're always president. Go on. Well, we sent letters with our gifts to encourage our fighting men to keep up their morale. Get to this, Lieutenant. Well, they asked for pictures. And you sent my picture to some lieutenant. That's it, isn't it? Oh, she sent more than your picture. You should have heard him. I sent him hope and faith and the will to go on. Miriam, do you realize what you've done? Yes. I made a soldier out of a lonely, frightened youngster. He's a grown man. Not his spirit. I'm not talking about his spirit. <laughs> Poor fellow's come home to see his sweetheart. He's entitled to something and he's going to get it. Did he say that? Well, what do you suppose a boy who's flown 25 missions and uh, is nervous in a plane anyway expects? Ruth, he's in love with you. Oh, but there's a limit to how much you can do with one or two letters. Miriam, how many letters were there? Sixty-three. Sixty-three? <laughs> you? I wrote him sixty-three letters? Some were poems. Well, what did you say in them? I said what he wanted to hear. He was lonely and frightened, and, and he poured out his heart to me. And who's going to pour it back? Father, I can't regret what I've done. I've given a soldier to the war. I'm sure his parents will be very happy to hear that. Oh, this is nothing short of criminal. Father, please, I'll handle everything. I'll simply tell Bill what I've done. And that will make everything all right. If you mean, do I think that's kind? No. He'll suffer. But in years to come, he'll be grateful that I gave him the opportunity to contribute as much as he was capable of in the struggle of our new generation against the old. The old generation has just one dying gasp, young woman, and it's this. You're not to have any allowance for six months, and you're not to participate in any of your French, China, Lithuanian, or political science freedom movements while you're under this roof. That's final. Sorry, please. You're to blame, Edith. You're what? the keeper of my home, the molder of my children, and I, I'm not satisfied with the molding. Oh. 
but it isn't as terrible as all that, Dad. All right, Ruth, what's your solution? The solution you've always taught us, the truth. A fine, virtuous solution for us, but what about him? Mother? Yes, Miriam. Should Dora make biscuits? Biscuits? He's coming here! Now, Lieutenant Seacroft! Oh, it really isn't a tragedy. Why, why, he may even laugh at it. Now, it's funny. I may have a warped sense of humor, but I... Dora, Mother, I'll get it. Don't you move. Don't you dare. Oh, oh, that must be Albert. Oh, dear, and I'm not nearly ready. It's Lieutenant Seacroft, Judge. Fine, Dora, fine. Just tell Lieutenant Seacroft we'll be right down. <laughs> well, well, Lieutenant Seacroft, I, uh... I believe you know my oldest daughter, Ruth. Well, uh, yes, I do. How do you do? And this is our youngest, Miriam. Sweet 16 and never been poisoned. <laughs> Not yet, that is. Oh, I, uh, I feel I know a great deal about Miriam. Uh, Ruth told me all about her in her letters. You're right, Miriam. It's our generation against the last. Thank you. Well, I, uh, I guess I know a lot about all of you. You know, I... I wondered how our first meeting would be, Ruth. Our, our first minute, and I... Well, I, I promised to bring you lilacs, didn't I? But it's not the season for lilacs. No, no, it isn't, is it? I, uh, I didn't know what you'd like to do tonight, Ruth, so I got tickets for a musical show and a legitimate play and a table at the Stork. But you don't have to do any of them. Well, isn't that rather extravagant? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. Well... Actually, your coming is rather a surprise in more ways than one. Ruth, I, I, I stopped at the bank today. I, I thought surely you saw me. No, no, I didn't. Oh, the bank policeman finally became suspicious. <laughs> but we wound up having lunch together. Oh, oh, that must be Mr. Simmons. He's very nice. He's oh, been... Dora! Now, I wonder who that... Well, I'll just go to the window. Oh, it's that man from the bank, Mr. Cummer. Never mind, Dora. I'll go. Man from the bank? Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> They want me to do some work tonight, and I'd rather not. Would you mind slipping out the back door, Lieutenant? Well, I wouldn't mind at all. Oh, uh, you'll be right out, won't you? Oh, of course. What in the world? Mother, I can't humiliate him in front of Albert. Uh, well, he'll be going back overseas in a couple of days anyway. Oh, no. He has to be told, Mother. In case anyone's interested, Father's stalling Albert in the doorway. Mother, tell Albert exactly how it happened. You mean you're going out with Lieutenant Seacroft? I'll have to. Oh, Albert will understand. Tell him I'll call him in the morning. Good night, Ruth. You little brat. I ought to cut your throat. Well, Edith, look who's here. It's Albert. Well, come in. Oh, come here now, Bert. Hello, Mother. Hello, sis. Hello. <laughs> well, where's the bride? We've got a big date tonight. Oh, uh, uh, Ruth, uh, yes. Uh, uh, congratulations. Thanks, Dad. Uh, uh, Albert, uh, Ruth isn't home. I'll have to get used to... She isn't home. Albert, why don't you sit down? But where is she? Let's start at the beginning, Albert. Uh, you remember an organization called Bundles for Britain? Yes, I do, but... Well, there was also something called Bundles for Our Boys. I was president. You keep all of this. <laughs> they knitted sweaters and socks for the boys, Albert. And sometimes, along with the sweaters and socks, they'd send letters. You know, to keep up the morale. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Dear Ruth. Meanwhile, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. Libby, when we talked last week about Metro Golden Mare's new picture, Homecoming, you said you were eager to see it. That's right, Mr. Keeley. And I found it a wonderful and highly dramatic story. A perfect chance to reunite Clark, Clark Gable and Lana Turner. Yes, indeed. They were the natural choice for the surgeon and nurse. In fact, their roles seem made to order for them. And I think the same thing is true with Ann Baxter and John Hodiak. Oh, I was truly thrilled with the whole picture. And, of course, I love the romantic angle. <laughs> no one could miss that, Libby. Not with Lana and Anne playing the two lovely women in Clark's life. And they are really lovely, Mr. Keeley. That's why I know John Kennedy will be most interested in seeing the picture. Mm, of course I'm interested, Libby. <laughs> why, they're two of my favorite actresses. To say nothing of being tops in the glamour department. Oh, they do make a dazzling pair in MGM's homecoming. Lux girls, both of them, as of course you know. One look at those million-dollar complexions, 
And you can understand why lovely screen stars depend on gentle Lux soap care. Nine out of ten stars recommend beauty facials with Lux toilet soap. It's a beauty care that really works. That's why. Yes. Screen stars tell me their Lux soap facials give skin new freshness and beauty so quickly. Tests of Lux toilet soap by skin specialists prove that. In actually three out of four cases, complexions became softer, smoother in a short time. So, here's a tip to women everywhere. If you want your skin to be lovelier, more appealing, try fragrant white Lux toilet soap. It's Hollywood's own beauty soap, you know. Back now to our producer, William Keeley. Act two of Dear Ruth, starring William Holden as Bill, Joan Caulfield as Ruth, and Billy DeWolf as Albert. Sixty-three impassioned letters and a snapshot of a beautiful blonde have catapulted Lieutenant Bill Seacroft to the doorstep of Ruth Wilkins. But he's blissfully unaware that it was Ruth's young sister who wrote the letters, or that his dream girl has just become engaged to Mr. Albert Cummer, banker. Determined to explain everything, Ruth has disappeared with the enraptured lieutenant, leaving her mother and father with a slightly frantic fiancé. So you see, Albert, everything's going to be all right. But where is she? Where is Ruth now? I told you, she went out with him for the evening. Ruth's going out with a strange man the very day we're engaged. I I simply can't understand it. Wouldn't you like some coffee, Albert? It'll only take a minute. No, no, thank you. Oh, just look at the time. Heaven only knows what's going on. He's probably got Ruth in some nightclub, plying her with wine. Relax, Albert. After all, he's only in the air corps. He might have been a Marine, you know. This is the fourth nightclub we've been to tonight. Really, Lieutenant, I... Boy, if Chuck could only see us now. Who's he? Chuck, my sergeant. I wrote you about him. Oh, oh, Chuck. I, I thought you said Buck. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant. Bill. Bill, there's something I really have to tell you. And there's something I want to tell you, too. When I was flying over Germany, you know what I used to think about? What? This. A place like this. Just you and I. You know, when you got something to think about, you're not so scared. Bill, how did you happen to, well, feel this way about, about someone you've never even met? Well, that's a funny question. Why? Well, I could ask you the same thing. How did you happen to feel this way about me? Oh, I never thought of that. Uh, well, uh, uh, let's dance, shall we? gave you the idea you weren't a good dancer, baby. When did I tell you I wasn't... Well, your letters, don't you remember? Oh, Bill, we're not to talk about those letters anymore. Oh, but I loved your letters. The way they jump around. Let's free India. Let's impeach Congressman Wickley. Let's draft women. <laughs> well, I, I thought you'd be interested. I was crazy about him. And I'm crazy about you. I'm crazy about the way you crinkle your nose. And I'm crazy about... Bill... You. We're supposed to be dancing. Oh, boy, you sure are pretty. Eleven o'clock. Twelve o'clock. One o'clock. It is now 22 minutes after one. Oh, that clock's fast, Albert. It's really only 1.15. Frankly, I can't understand your attitude. Don't either of you realize that your daughter is out with a strange bombardier who probably hasn't seen an American woman in years? Albert, don't you think you'd feel better if you went home and got some sleep? No, I don't. I'm most certainly... There's a car coming. I hear a car. Well, let me look out the window. It's Ruth, all right. He's coming in with us. Oh, but we can't let them see us. Why not? It would be too embarrassing. Albert, please, we'll all go upstairs. I just can't understand this. Upstairs, Albert, upstairs. upstairs. Oh, very well. I'll switch off the lights. Well, good night, Bill. I had a wonderful time. So did I. Well, um... What are you so jumpy about? I, I can't let you walk into a dark house all alone. Bill! No, you mustn't. Oh, but baby, I've been waiting to kiss you since 63 letters ago. Oh, now you... But Bill! Well, I can't help it, Ruth. You have to go. Oh, no, no, not yet. Look, look, I'll keep my hands in my pockets, promise. 
Oh, Dad. Oh, oh, are you two back? I was just coming down for a little uh, baking soda. Good evening, sir. Have a nice time? Oh, it couldn't have been nicer. That's nice. Uh, Ruth, uh, that man from the bank. Yes? What did he have to say? Uh, that uh, work he left, uh, it's still upstairs. It... Oh. It's urgent. Work? Tonight? Oh, oh, I guess I'll have to. Oh, yes, yes, you'll have to. Oh, so good night, Bill. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, well tomorrow's today already. Well, <laughs> if you're not going to leave us, Judge Wilkins... Bill! Well, just a good night kiss. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just an innocent bystander. <laughs> good night, Ruth. Good night, Bill. Well, Ruth, you can start being charming but dignified. Come down, come down, wherever you are. <laughs> well. Hello, Albert. I have been waiting here for seven hours. No, 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 no. There's nothing to get excited about. Ruth, you didn't tell that lieutenant, did you? Oh, Mother, I just couldn't. Of course she couldn't, Mother, not unless they stopped kissing. Albert, you're jealous. Well, what the devil should I be? Oh, what? Well, he's a baby. Babies are usually kiss goodnight, but not like that. He's the most touching, romantic kid I've ever seen. Albert, I'd like to have a son just like him. How old is he? 24. If you're 22, won't that be a little difficult? I won't ever see him again. Oh, that is after tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, the least I can do is make things pleasant for him until he goes. No, Ruth, no. Albert, you bought war bonds. Well, this is my contribution. I'm going to keep his morale up. After we're married, we'll both buy war bonds. Oh, but, but Miriam's got us into it, and there's no choice left. Oh, please say you'll trust me for 24 hours. Please. Oh, I'm too tired to argue. I'm so sleepy, I'm numb. All right, Ruth, but something tells me I'm making a horrible mistake. Hello, Ruth. Did you have a nice time tonight? Miriam, are you still awake? Do you forgive me? <sighs> Don't I always. Well, your lieutenant is charming. A little impulsive, but charming. Ruth, my estimation of you has increased a thousandfold. Oh, thank you. Now, would you mind giving me just a hint of what was in those letters you sent him? I'm finding it a little difficult not knowing what I wrote. I'll get him for you right away. The ones he sent. Ruth, dear. I, did he behave himself? Oh, of course, Mother. Edith, did you know that Miriam is still up? Ruth wants the letters. I realize how my actions have distressed the family, and I've made a resolution to be more careful in the future. Well, it's about time. But let me add, Father, that in the world of political science, I regard you as simple as a child. I've got the letters, Ruth. A shoebox full. They're all in chronological order, and I'm sorry I upset you. Look at this one, 12 pages. Dear Ruth... I found your last letter most touching. To think that I should remind you of that poem is quite the nicest thing that ever... In this one, he says he's in favor of large families. And he says... Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, dear. Mother, please. We're, we're not going to read them. They're not written to us, and, and I didn't realize they're so personal. Aren't you going to read them? Oh, of course. They were written to me. As the legal authority in this family, I find a slight discrepancy in your reasoning. Well, well, I have to read them. You know I do. Well, all I'm interested in is his reactions to the war. But come along, Harry. Good night, Ruth. Good night, Mother. Dear Ruth, I have a confession to make, darling. Last week, when your wonderful letter reached me... Uh, good night, Ruth. Good night, Dad. <laughs> Good morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. Mother, all these lilacs, where on earth... They just came, dear, from that lieutenant. A whole truck full of lilacs from the hothouse. Oh, you should see downstairs. The house is simply dripping with them. Oh, what a sweet, crazy thing to do. Uh, Ruth, what did those letters say? Oh, so many things. As beautifully as anything I've ever read. Oh. He's nothing like he seems. He seems like a nice, clean-cut boy. And I certainly don't see what there is to cry about. I, I don't either, Mother. It's, it's plain silly. Harry! Aren't you going to shave? Shave in what? The wash bowl's full of lilacs. <laughs> so was my breakfast. I just had eggs lilac. Uh, where did Miriam go? 
Over to Clara's. I thought you said she had to stay home. I thought you were punishing her. Did you ever try to read the Sunday paper with Miriam sitting over there just staring at you? Good morning. May I come in? Oh, but why, of course. Is Ruth up? I brought her a little bouquet of... What's this? Lilacs, Albert. You are about to enter the botanical gardens. <laughs> Watch out for the bees. He sent them. That lieutenant. Yes, he seems to be very fond of flowers. Good morning, Dad. Oh, Albert. Good morning, dear. Good morning, Ruth. Had breakfast? Yes, thank you. Albert, aren't these lilacs just gorgeous? Ruth, I want you to break your date with the lieutenant. Albert, but you couldn't be jealous. I couldn't be, but I am. Oh, but the whole thing will be over in a few hours. What's so wonderful about your girl being kissed by a stranger for a few hours? Mother, I leave it to you. Am I being unreasonable? Well, I do... <gasps> Dora, for heaven's sake, what's that? That carton. It just come from Miss Ruth. It's certainly a big one. This is just one of them. There's ten cartons all together. Man said it was candy popcorn. Popcorn? There's two dozen boxes in each carton. 240 boxes of candied popcorn. Ruth, did he? It was in the letters that I loved candied popcorn. Put it all in the kitchen, Dora. I sure tried, but the kitchen's loaded with lilacs right now. Ruth, Ruth, I ask you. I love you, Albert. I love you for being jealous. No woman wants a man who's never jealous, darling. If that's all it takes, I can make you pretty happy. I promise you the lieutenant won't get on any subject that's remotely personal. Oh, I'll manage him, believe me. My worry is, can I manage you? Now, give me a kiss. Well. There. Feel better now? Some, but it's all against my better judgment. Well, now, that's odd. What's odd? Uh, look out the window, Harry. There's a girl out there staring at our house. Well, see who she is, Edith. Maybe she's in trouble. Yes, yes, I'd better. Oh, young lady. Young lady. Well, now, think of that. So you're Bill Seacroft's sister from Philadelphia. Well, it, it... Very nice meeting you all, except that I... Well, I'm so embarrassed. You see, Bill phoned me and said he'd meet me in front of your house, and now I'm disturbing you all. Oh, of I, course not. I, how long has it been since you've seen your brother? Two years. Oh, I wish he were here. I called him from the station at his hotel, and... I, oh, I seem to be getting in deeper and deeper. The simple truth is, I used to be engaged to a boy named Chuck Vincent. He's a sergeant in Bill's crew, you see, and they're all at the hotel. Oh, I see. And it would be so uncomfortable if we met. We're not engaged anymore, you see. Oh, dear, I'm afraid I'm giving you the impression we're a very peculiar family. Oh, no, no, not at all. Ruth, do you know when you're going to be married? Uh, I beg your pardon? I mean, is there a definite hour set for the ceremony? Uh, oh, no, 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 no uh, definite hour, no. On the other hand, Bill may have arranged it all himself. Uh, yes, that's so, isn't it, Mr. Cover? Well, the reason I asked is that I'll have to leave right after the ceremony. Uh, I see. Uh, isn't it rather warm in here? <laughs> It's going to be a lot warmer, Edith. It's very warm in Philadelphia. <coughs> oh, well, I'll get it. It's probably Miriam. Good morning, baby. Oh, good morning. Oh, baby, you look wonderful, just wonderful. Uh, come in. Uh, Bill, I don't believe you've met Mr. Cummer. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Pardon me, sir. Bill, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to kiss you, of course. But that's not fair. I'm, well, I mean... all's fair in love and war, Mr. Cummer, and I'm in both. <laughs> I mean, your sister's here. Didn't you even notice her? Sid. Oh, Bill. Oh, gosh, honey, how are I'm you? I'm fine, Bill, and I'm so thrilled. You're coming home and getting married and everything. Well, I'm slightly thrilled myself. Uh, looks as I'm sorry we'll have to run right off, but Ruth and I have... Run off? Where? Oh, but we couldn't think of leaving Martha, Bill. Oh, I don't mind, Ruth. Really, I don't. Uh, uh, why can't you all take a nice bus ride together? Oh, well, I'm sure they'd rather be alone. Martha, I insist you come with us. But Ruth, baby, I... I won't go without her, Bill. And Albert will come along, too. Won't you, Albert? Why, that would be wonderful. I haven't been on a bus since yesterday. <laughs> Look, Ruth... Ruth, this isn't what I had planned at oh, all. Oh, we'll have a lovely time, all four of us. Now, come along, Bill. Martha, you stick right by me. Well, aren't you going, Albert? I'm going all right. Judge, I'm a patient man, but only up to a point, and it's been reached. Now, Albert, nothing can happen on a bus. It can happen the way he'll arrange it. Albert! He and his big, fat morale. What about my morale? I'm civilian showman, too. Ruth, wait for me. I'm coming. Ruth! <laughs> for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. We'll 
will continue with Dear Ruth in just a moment. Our guest tonight, Miss Barbara Bates, seems very young indeed to be a full-fledged Warner Brothers starlet. How did you achieve that so soon, Barbara? Why, Mr. Keeley, it's always been my ambition to be an actress. I did freelance picture work for some time before I got that studio contract. And now you're about to begin your first important screen role. Yes, and I want more than anything to make good at it. I think that one of the best ways a young actress can learn is to study famous stars on the studio sets. Imagine what a thrill it was to see Betty Davis doing the scenes for her latest picture. Winter Meeting. Yes. Isn't that a nice title? Those New England sets were lovely. Snow-covered houses and village streets. Must have reminded Betty of her home in New Hampshire. That's exactly what she told me. She has a handsome new leading man in the picture, Jim Davis. No relation, of course. <laughs> no. He gallantly offered to change his name to avoid confusion, but Betty wouldn't let him. You know Janice Page, of course. Yes, indeed. One of our most promising younger stars. I think she handles her role in Winter Meeting beautifully. And she loved doing it. Life's been exciting for Janice lately. She was married right after the picture was finished. You must have made a radiant bride. Oh, you should have seen her. Mr. Kennedy here would have admired her beautiful complexion. A lovely Lux complexion. Just the kind for a bride to have. Well, Janice Page is a Lux girl, all right. She uses Lux toilet soap for her complexion and for her bath, too. When I saw the new bath-sized cake in her dressing room, I went right out and got some. And really, Mr. Kennedy, it's wonderful. That generous bath-sized cake has made a hit everywhere. Oh, once you've used it, you know why. Such rich, creamy lather, it makes a real beauty bath. Thank you, Miss Barbara Bates. The new bath-sized Lux toilet soap has the famous Lux soap perfume that leaves such a delicate flower-like fragrance on the skin. Buy it in the familiar sampler wrapper. Let the whole family enjoy this big new bath size Lux toilet soap. We return you now to William Keeley. Act three of Dear Ruth, starring Joan Caulfield in the title role, William Holden as Bill, and Billy DeWolf as Albert. Almost two hours, the Wilkins residence, reeking somewhat of lilacs and candied popcorn, has remained ominously calm and quiet. But then, the telephone rang. Harry, who phoned? That was Sergeant Vincent. Who? Sergeant Chuck Vincent. He wanted to talk to Bill, so I invited him to come on over. Oh, why, he must be the one Bill's sister was engaged to. Oh, dear, they're not supposed to meet. Well, if they're not supposed to meet, this is just the place. <laughs> Edith, I've been thinking about Albert. I'm afraid Albert's going to have a bad day. Oh, he'll forget all about it by tomorrow. Harry, Albert will make a good husband, don't you think so? So calm and reserved. Where is she? Where's Ruth? Why, Albert, come in. Where's Ruth? Isn't she back? Isn't she with you? No, Mother, she is not with me. No one's here, Albert, except the sergeant. What sergeant? A friend of Bill's. He just went upstairs. Albert, your clothes. What's happened to you? I was arrested by the Interborough Rapid Transit Company. No. Oh, yes, you got me into this and you can get me out. Well, what seems to be the trouble? After the bus ride, he wanted to ride on the subway. How can anyone want to ride on the subway? Start from the beginning, Albert. But four of us were standing on the platform of this train. See? Jammed against the door. We pulled into a station, the door opened, and somebody pushed me out. And I know who it was. Oh, I'm so mad I could tell me how you got arrested. Oh, and please, please speak quietly, Albert. Your face is blue. I got a taxi. I was going to catch that train at the next stop. Why, that was very clever of you, dear. I got to the turnstile just as the train was pulling in, but I didn't have a nickel. Oh! <laughs> So I crawled under the turnstile, and a guard grabbed me. He called a policeman. Here's the summons he gave me for stealing a nickel. Prominent bank executive arrested for stealing a nickel. Oh. Oh. My, this hasn't turned out well at all. No, it hasn't, Mother Wilkins, and I'd be very grateful to you if you wouldn't say, nothing can possibly happen. Uh, well, well, nothing can, Albert. The worst he can do is propose to Ruth, and that's just words. It's how a man proposes. You don't just ask a girl, you kiss her. And if she objects, you keep on kissing her. And Ruth will keep objecting. And I hope you don't think I'm eccentric if I tell you I just don't like it. You're getting blue again, Albert. Thank you, it goes with the lilacs. Oh, Mr. Clover. Well, I guess we got separated. Yes, we did, Miss Seacroft. 
where Ruth and your brother... Oh, we got separated, too. Did Albert tell you what happened, Mrs. Wilkins? Isn't it funny? Well, I wouldn't say it was exactly... Who's that? Who's what? That man on the stairs. Oh, oh, why, that's Sergeant Vincent. Come on down, Sergeant. Miss Seacroft, may I present Sergeant Vincent? How do you do? We've already met, haven't we? Now, please, Chuck, try to remember we're guests in someone's home. Oh, I'll remember, all right. Lunch is ready, Miss Wilkins. Oh, dear. Well, I don't think we'd better wait for Ruth and Bill. They've probably found something better to do. What? Uh, lunch, everybody. Lunch! How about another piece of pie, Sergeant? Oh, no, thanks, Miss Wilkins. I'm sure filled up. I... Well, well, here's Ruth now and Lieutenant Seacroft. We're in the dining room, Ruth. We weren't sure you'd be back. Oh, so that's just... perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. You tell him, Ruth. Well, if you won't, I will. Ruth and I are going to be married. Married? Well, what do you know? Congratulations. Well, this is something of a surprise, but uh, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, congratulations, both of you. Let's make it unanimous. Yes, why not? Congratulations. Well, thank you, sir. And you can stop addressing me as sir. I'm under 85. <laughs> oh, uh... By the way, uh, Ruth mentioned something about you getting married, too. Uh, yes, but it's a little confused at the moment. Well, I, uh, I hope it works out. Oh, oh, it'll work out, Albert. Believe me. The lieutenant sure works fast, huh? Yes. I don't see how the war's lasted this long. <laughs> I thought we left them in the dining room so they could eat lunch. Sit down, Albert. They'll be through soon. He hasn't eaten a bite. He keeps kissing her. Well, look in there. Uh, Harry, uh, where did that sergeant go with Bill's sister? They said something about taking a walk. Well, I thought they weren't speaking to each other. And where's Miriam? Still at Clara's, I hope. That's one blessing, anyway. Ah! Oh, what is the matter with you? In there, he just kissed her again. Now, <laughs> oh, Albert. Albert, you just have to try to understand. Judge, I have a deposit on a house. I have a minister in a church reserve. I... Albert, please, not so loud. He'll be leaving the country in a few hours. Do you realize what that, that bombardier can do in a few hours? Albert, you're getting all blue again. Shh, quiet, quiet. Here they come. Ah, oh, well, did you two have a nice lunch? Oh, delicious, Mother. Mother? Oh... You know, Mr. Cummer, you and I, both being engaged, have a lot in common. Haven't we? And just call me Albert. I'm an old, old friend of the family. Well, thank you. I, you, know, you know, I can see our kids calling you Uncle Albert. Gonna have kids all over the place, aren't we, Ruth? Telephone <laughs> <laughs> for Lieutenant Seacroft. Uh-oh. That's it, I bet. The axe. Axe? My orders. I called the air base before and left this number. Well... For the first time today, Ruth, I can address you without him around. Oh, darling, it isn't as serious as all that. Bill's leaving. As soon as he's gone, I'll write and tell him. Gradually, gently, I'll let him go. Ruth! Down. Ruth! We don't have to go. We're going to stay in America. That was a colonel. He said so. He said so himself. No! Oh, no! Yeah, we're going to be instructors in Florida. <laughs> Boy, this is my lucky day. No, yeah, I... I, I... I have to... No, no, look, we're going to leave tonight. You don't mind if Ruth gets, Ruth gets married in Florida, do you, Mrs. Wilkins? Well, I, oh, I, I couldn't, Bill. The bank. Well, they, they're so short of help. Why, Albert can tell you. It'll be impossible, Lieutenant, really. Oh, oh, shame on you, Albert. And you're about to be married yourself. Hey, Bill! Bill! We're not mad at each other anymore. Martha and I, we took a walk and patched up everything. We agreed it was my fault. Oh, now, Chuck, it was all my fault. <laughs> anyway, Bill, we want to get married. Sis... Allow me to give you your first wedding present. Chuck and I don't have to go. We're staying on as instructors in Florida. We are. Oh, darling. Hey, you could marry him right now, couldn't you, Judge? I'll do anything anybody says. Anything. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth, we could make it a double wedding. What do you say? Now, wait a minute. Uh, we'd have to discuss that alone, Bill. Oh, uh, you're a hard woman. Chuck, look, I'll pick up the tickets and get our orders. Now, you help Martha get ready. Yes, sir. Come on, Martha. Boy, oh, boy. Everybody's getting married. Isn't it wonderful? Bill... I have to talk to you. Oh, sure, baby, sure. And, uh, I, I'll have to get hold of a, a marriage license. Uh, I'll go with you, Harry. Ruth, I'll stay or not, just as you wish. You, you better go along with Mother and Dad, Albert. Bill, let's go out in the garden. Now, don't worry about me, Albert. I'll have her convinced in five minutes. <laughs> and, Bill, the plain truth is, I, I don't intend to marry you... Not now or ever. Oh, but Ruth... I thought you'd be leaving. I counted on it. You were going away to face something terribly hazardous. 
I had no other choice. I love you, Ruth. And you do like me. Well, don't you? Oh, Bill, there are other factors. Oh, it's entirely my fault. I... Oh, Bill, excuse me. I'd like to find a little gift for Martha and Chuck. Sure, go on. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, Miriam. I just came home. Oh. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. That's what Ruth just said. I just saw her. She was crying. Oh. She told you. Yep, she told me. You're angry with me. No, why should I be angry with you? Oh, that's very generous of you. Oh, it must have been hard for you to find time to write all those letters. I did mine in school for typing practice. Do you feel all right? Fine. Oh, I wouldn't feel too badly about Ruth. She's pretty bourgeois to be able to marry Albert, a reactionary of the first water. Holy H, Harry! What's the matter? You wrote those letters, didn't you? Of course I did. Well, holy H! Oh, oh, what must she think of me? I'm the biggest sap that ever lived. You didn't know, but you said she told you. <gasps> you tricked me into telling you. Albert. Albert, of course. She's engaged to marry Albert. I didn't mean to tell you. I've only made it worse. No, oh, no, no, no. Look, look, Miriam. Don't let Ruth know that I know. Don't let anyone know. Oh, she did this for me. She wanted me to have these two days. Now, look, let's keep it that way, Miriam. Promise? I promise. Cross your heart? I'm not a child, Lieutenant. Well, well, where are you going? Oh, into town to get the ticket. Now, if you'll sign your name on the marriage certificate, Chuck. Oh, sure, Judge. Only Bill hasn't come back yet. He'll be here. Miriam, keep quiet. You were certainly lucky I was able to find Judge Kindridge. He waived the three-day waiting period when I told him what the circumstances were. Bill! Uh, I got our tickets and our orders. You and Martha have to be at Grand Central in an hour. I'll leave at midnight. Oh, swell. But I can't understand you not being able to talk Ruth into going. Well, I, uh, I tried. When will you be down, Ruth? He's not going to be fit to live with until you get there. Well, I, I don't know exactly, Chuck. But Bill understands. Well, now that we're all here... Stand right over there, Albert. You've got to be a witness. All right, Martha. You and Chuck stand right in front of me. And lay off that popcorn, Miriam, till this is over with. Yes, Father. <laughs> with the authority vested in me, I pronounce you man and wife. Martha, we're married. Oh, Chuck. Oh, now, children, you'll have lots of time for kissing on the train. I just don't know how to thank you all. Good luck, sis. Me too, Martha. I know you'll be very happy. Thank you, Ruth. My turn to kiss the bride. As a man about to go to the gallows himself in two short weeks, this has all been very educational. Uh, better hurry, Martha. Yes, I, I, I'll get my things. Hey, you're not leaving me. Perhaps we'd better go up with them, Edith. Maybe we can help. Oh, yes. Well, Lieutenant, something on your mind? Ruth. Uh, yes, Bill? Well, I, uh, I know all that happened. She did? Miriam let it slip. What, what do you know? Oh, Bill, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's... That's okay. I never thought it would go this far, but, but you're so, well, impetuous. And, well, one thing led to another, and the first thing you know... Yeah, I know, of course, of course. You know what kills me about the whole thing? <laughs> All those letters and poetry flying back and forth across the Atlantic. That kills me back and forth. <laughs> That's for you, Albert. Telephone. Coming, Judge. It's the Reverend Mr. Hardwick. About the church. Perfectly all right. There, the secret's out. We all just had a good laugh over it. Still, you'd better use the phone upstairs. Whatever you say, Dad. I hope there are no hard feelings, Bill. Well, of course not. I. You. You certainly couldn't have been more considerate. Well, there won't be room enough in the car for all of us, so I think I'll find a taxi somewhere. Oh, uh, these are Chuck's tickets, Judge. Will you tell him I'll meet him at the train? Certainly. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Bill. Well, that's that. You know, I'm kind of surprised. You mean you thought I'd run off with him? Oh, no. no. A lieutenant I've met for one day. Just one day of his being touching and amusing. And you think I'd exchange that for a man I've known for years who offers me security, who loves me? Ruth, I only... You thought I'd marry him. You wanted me to. 
You prefer Bill. Ruth, I thought fate was pushing you, well, so I... I'm a fatalist, too. But he's gone. And I'm over him already. By tomorrow, I'll be over him still more. And by the time I marry Albert, I... Boy, excuse me. I, I left the wrong railroad tickets. Oh, Bill. I... Oh, darling. Huh? Bill, Bill. Oh, I've always wanted to see Florida. What do you mean? I'm just crazy about it. Are you sure? I'm certain. Well, well can you leave now? Well, I... You know, by an odd coincidence, I happen to have an extra marriage license right here in my pocket. Oh, you're joking. No, no, I brought it along, just in case. Now, we'll have to make it fast. Dora! Yes, sir? Get in here and be a witness. Witness? You heard me. Hold hands. Yes, sir? Not you! <laughs> Ruth and Bill, here we go. Friends, we are gathered here to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. Well, that's it, kids. You're married. Oh, Ruth, baby. Hurry out the back way. I can hear them upstairs. They're coming down. I'll send you a wire, Dad, where to send my clothes. Yes, dear. Oh, oh, and tell Albert there's insanity in the family. Oh. Harry, guess what? Albert just set the date with Reverend Hardwick. A week from Sunday, Dad. Oh, Ruth! Ruth, where are you, dear? Get the car, Harry. Chuck and Martha have to get to the station. Uh, yes. Ruthie! Oh, Ruthie! Harry, that expression on your face, what's the matter? Well, you're calling Ruth, Mother. I don't think she's here. Well, where is she? Miriam, what are you doing here? I live here, Father. Oh. <laughs> Where's Ruth? Where did she go? Now... Now, be calm, Albert. There's something I want to... T Is that you, darling? Uh, uh, it's me. Excuse me for barging in, but... but... it's a sailor. Well, young man... We just docked in the Navy Yard. I came over as fast as I could. Is Miss Ruth Wilkins at home? Harold! Harold Clobbermeyer! Miriam! Another one! Oh, no! No! Curtain falls on Dear Ruth, and now I'm sure you'll want to meet our stars in person. Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf. Joan, you must be one of Hollywood's busiest actresses. One minute I see you in the newsreel skiing in Canada, and the next minute, it seems, I, I hear you're making another picture. As a matter of fact, Mr. Keeley, I just finished one at Paramount. In which, I understand, you play the part of a fast-working gold digger. Yes, Bill. Veronica Lake and I get chased by every wolf and sheriff from here to the Canadian border. But that doesn't sound much like the title of the picture, Joan, The Sainted Sisters. Well, Billy, as you know, a woman isn't always what she seems to be. Yeah, like Mrs. Murgatroyd, for instance, whom Billy DeWolf has introduced to theater goers. Oh! Oh, yes, the so-called lady in the cocktail bar. What about giving us a little Mrs. Murgatroyd, Billy? Young man, would you mind watching this bag, please? Thank you very much. Young man, that bag, please. Well, waiter, now, I don't know exactly what to order. I'm celebrating my wedding anniversary, and I thought, thank you very much. Eighteen years. Eighteen wonderful years with Chesley. Uh, so you can see just as soon as I... <clears throat> so you can see just... Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> So you can see just as... Oh, that makes me so mad. I just paid the dentist $17.50. Now, they shouldn't whistle back at me like that. <laughs> well, that's wonderful, Billy. You know, I won't inquire if Mrs. Murgatroy uses Lux soap. <laughs> but when it comes to a beautiful girl like Joan Caulfield, well, I'm sure there's no question about it. Well, that's right, Mr. Keeley. I started using Lux Soap when I first went on the stage, and I've never been without it since. What are your plans for next week, Bill? Next Monday night, we bring our audience a play that's thrilled millions of picture-goers. Milton Sperling's Cloak and Dagger. A story of mystery, romance, and hazardous adventure in the OSS. And our stars are Ronald Reagan and that new exciting personality, Lily Palmer, in the role that she created on the screen. That ought to make great listening, Mr. Keeley. Sounds simply superb. Oh, I must get those fixed. <laughs> Good night, Bill. Good night, Bill. Good night. And all our thanks for dear Ruth. <laughs> Ladies, how would you like some sparkling new aluminum for your kitchen? 
The heavy, substantial kind you use for years. This big lever value lets you save from 33 and a third to 50% on beautiful, heavy-gauge, regal aluminum ware. Here's what you get. A pair of 8-inch aluminum cake pans nested for easy stacking. Only 75 cents for both, though they're worth $1.15. A big 2-quart covered aluminum saucepan with a no-burn Bakelite handle and cover knob. Worth $2, it costs you only $1. A 9-inch fry pan, extra deep and extra heavy 10-gauge, it's worth $2, but costs you only $1. All utensils have easy-to-clean, rounded corners. Here's what you do to get them. Buy any two of these famous Lever products. Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes, Rinso, Life Boy, Swan, Silver Dust, or Spry. Send in two box tops or wrappers for each offer you want, together with money-saving price. Orders will be sent postpaid within three weeks. Buy your Lever products at your dealer's buy two sale. He'll give you complete details and handy order blanks. Mail to Lever Brothers Company, Homemakers Club, Box 1, New York City. This offer is good through August 1st, 1948, only in the continental U.S., including Alaska and Hawaii, and is subject to any state and local regulations. Don't miss this money-saving offer. And now, I'm happy to make another announcement you ladies have been waiting for. It gives me pleasure to congratulate the four women who are top winners in the fifth and last week of Lever Brothers' sensational fur contest. First prize goes to Mrs. Leon L. Bagley of Cornish, New Hampshire. The second prize winners are Grace R. Hosfeld of 10 Prince Avenue, Lacey Park, Hatboro, Pennsylvania. Mrs. A.V. Dibert of 8508 Hazelwood Drive, Bethesda, 14, Maryland. And Mrs. Ernest W. Blair of 3202 Marlin Avenue, Tampa 6, Florida. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Reagan and Lily Palmer in Cloak and Dagger. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. William Holden appeared by arrangement with Paramount Pictures, producers of The Big Clock, starring Ray Milland and Charles Lawton. Billy DeWolf appeared through the courtesy of Paramount Studios, who will shortly release Hazard, starring Paulette Goddard and McDonald Carey. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Cloak and Dagger with Ronald Reagan and Lily Palmer. Ladies, get Pepsodent's sensational bargain offer, the Lana Turner Ballpoint Pocket Perfumer. Regular $1.95 value, yet it's yours. Plus a supply of Harriet Hubbard Ayers You Perfume for only 50 cents. Fashion's newest accessory for carrying perfume. Designed for Lana Turner, who stars opposite Clark Gable in MGM's hit, Homecoming. Send 50 cents with both blue end flaps from any Pepsodent carton to Pepsodent, Box 776, Chicago, Illinois. Offer good United States and territories only. Send tonight. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Cloak and Dagger with Ronald Reagan and Lily Palmer. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>